Good morning, everybody. My name is Gary. I am the uh, director of the Rocky Mountain Ukulele Orchestra, and I also run Jolly Roger Ukulele website. And I'm going to go right there right now and post uh, our schedule, uh, the link to this class. And I am going to um, recommend you go there as well. The JollyRogerUkulele.com is where we post our daily lessons and sheet music and all that stuff. Uh, and the purpose of that is to get you where you can have the skills to play in all the different ways that we play ukulele, in addition to setting you up for success as an ensemble musician. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Today's activity is Scarborough Fair. It's the last song in this series, uh, the foundation series. And um, tomorrow is Decision Day. <laughs> judgment. Tomorrow is Judgment Day. And that is where we will uh, talk, take a lot, uh, an honest assessment of where we're at in our lives and how you, ukulele is going for us. JollyRogerUkulele.com. And um, I toss on the, I'm tossing this on to Twitter as well. I like, throw, I like tweeting these things. Um, tweet. Twitter's been a nasty place this week, so I have been off of it almost completely. And so now we have posted our link. Uh, we'll be starting here momentarily. It looks like we're having a little bit of a slow start. Um, one of the things that happens now that I'm using a presentation software in conjunction with YouTube is that the delay is shocking. Like I'm talking now um, and then a week and a half later it's showing up at your house. <laughs> and so uh, the uh, conversations are always a little bit like, uh, 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 but that's okay. Um, so whatever, whatever time the conversation gets to your house, that's what is exciting and feel free to use the chat bar and all of that stuff. Um, today we're going to be playing uh, the last song in the the foundation series but it's really guys the first songs in book two and so we're going to talk about books and all that stuff here in just a second and uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, the concert that we're planning for tomorrow and we are going to be talking about all sorts of delightful stuff here's the problem that i'm facing right now when we play any song that is in the S's or later, it takes me about 20 minutes to scroll through on this gadget. This gadget was supposed to be the thing for musicians. And it turns out that it's fine as long as you don't have anything better to do um, and don't need to get to any piece of music in any hurry or don't have very much music, I guess. <laughs> so guess what, Gary? And I was going to get an iPad, uh, but they've moved off the, the uh, new iPad Pro distribution until at least April. So uh, so you guys have to sit while I uh, scroll through all this sheet music. Um, what are we playing? <laughs> Scarborough Fair. SC is what I'm looking for. I'm in the S's finally. Scarborough Fair. We'll start with the ukulele, give you a lesson on that. Most of you guys are on ukulele, and then we always toss in the baritone as well. Uh, who wandered in here? Vic made it in. Sound is good. Cloudy up in Eugene. Um, typical day in Eugene, I think. Uh, hello, I'm glad to be here. Sound is good. Donna's in from Lakewood. Uh, uh, here in Colorado, we are having a mostly sunny day. The clouds have been slowly burning off, and we're supposed to get up to around 50 today. It's supposed to be nice. Uh, Janice reports that the sun is shining over the hills of Scotland. <laughs> so, uh, having been to Scotland one time in my life, I will tell you, when the sun is out, there's no place else you'd rather be. Um, and I understand it rains a little in Scotland, uh, but uh, Janice is having a miraculous day there, and so glad to have you there. It's getting about sunset, uh, probably, about... about uh, um, well, that's exactly what it's setting over the hills, you know, in these long shafts. Um, when you go that far north, um, the sun is at a cool angle to the earth anyway, so the, so the, the, the shadows and the lighting is just amaz amazing up there. Glad you're here, Janice. Lynn is in uh, Colorado Springs, which is right down there. The sun is set, sets at a little different angle there, but it's amazing there as well. So Linda's in the Scotland of Colorado. 
Lynn is in new from New Jersey. I thought my guitar guy was going to put the strings on my uke while I waited, but he asked me to leave it and pick it up Saturday. I need a second. Yes, you need a second uke. Everybody needs two ukes. You need your your cheap one that you bought uh, when you started into ukulele, and then you need your good one that you actually play on that for just these times. Um, yeah, I would say that's not untypical, Lynn. It depends on the shop and, and how busy they are. Uh, most of the time when people bring me strings, I would rather them just wait and I put it on mine right then and there. Um, but it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes I can't do it right at that moment. And so we always talk about it before I leave it there. Um, but uh, yeah, it, I, I think, and I actually think that's probably a reasonable turnaround too, uh, Lynn, is a couple of days on that. So um, yeah, usually if you'd leave it with me, it's like, oh God, <laughs> come back in a week. Uh, that's how bad it gets. Rob is in 64 and cloudy down in Texarkana. We've been, I've been keeping an eye on the weather down there, Rob. Is it definitely hit or miss, huh? Mary's in from Golden, got her baritone fired up. Scarborough Fair, guys. Lesson 29 of 30 um, for the Foundations program. Lesson 30 is when you come to my office and we sit down and we have a chat. <laughs> okay, uh, And I make sure that it, what I think I taught you, I, you actually learned. Um, and so tomorrow we'll take a brief overview of what I hope that you're le you've learned uh, and how to think about your next steps in ukulele. The one thing I did want to mention and... Um, um, is that you know that you're never going to feel comfortable in music the rest of your lives, right? You're never, ever going to quite get there. Every now and then I have a guitarist. It's never a ukulele player. It's always a guitarist. They come into uh, one of my lessons, uh, you know, usually a community lesson. They, they want getting their feet wet, making sure they want to meet, you know, they're not, I don't often get somebody calling up out of the blue, uh, hey, I want to take private lessons. I do get that occasionally, but not very often. Um, mostly they're coming into my group classes, community classes, and um uh, they are like, yeah, I'm a, I know this and I know this and I know this. And then I say, all right, so we're going to pull out Frere Jacques and Three Blind Mice and Farmer in the Dell. And you can see him twisting <laughs> uh, because I teach that way on purpose because I want you to have tools, right? I give you all of your tools and then it's up to you to get practice using those tools. So if somebody gives you a hammer and says, go build a house, um, you, you, you'll you be able to do it eventually, right? But your first house you build with that hammer is going to be pretty terrible, <laughs> right? The 30th house you build with that hammer is going to be like, oh, geez, that guy really knows what he's doing. Um, but uh, same thing with this program. We're giving you all the tools. You're not going to feel comfortable with any of them yet, I hope. I mean, I hope that there's some sort of uh, period where you're struggling a little bit. Um, and uh, so you're probably never, ever going to feel like, oh, I've got this whole thing together. I've been playing this darn instrument for 20 years. And even even now, I, there's plenty of times when I'm like, oh, my gosh, what the heck? Am I, how am I going to get that done? You know, um, so a little humility goes a long way within music. And it's OK that you don't know everything. It's also OK if, if you're playing along with me and you're like, yeah, I can play the melody. That's not too hard. Uh, or, oh, yeah, I think I can pull these chords off. Um, oh, that tough you I can't do that at all. And feeling like you've got to reach a certain level before you advance. Um, a song like this is exactly the same as everything I teach in the level two class. Is And it is very similar to most of what goes on in the, in the uh, Monday night class. Though the difference between Monday night and uh, the daytime class is that the music is modern. So there, it's covered by copyright issues. Um, and um, and then right now we're doing jazz, so the chords are a little weird. Uh, but uh, but other than that, everything that you've already been taught, that's exactly what we're doing up there. A little faster, a little more interesting music, a little bit harder chords sometimes. Uh, but the, the foundation that you've built here is the foundation. There's nothing else that I have to, to tell you at this point. Um, we talk in the next class about you know emphasizing certain things or de-emphasizing things special techniques and that so just make sure that you know that you don't need to know everything in order to graduate <laughs> from foundation you need to know what the sheet music is you need to know what all these lines mean on here you need to have a general sense of how i approach it and then you, and then once you have that then you can you can go through the class again and get even more comfortable or you can say you know what i'm just going to go ahead and move on up into the next level class um 
And I would not think about it as you must pass French 101 in order to go to French 102. I would not think about that. As long as you know where France is and you know how French people are, come to come to come to level 102. <laughs> so yeah, so there's that. Um, um, and I would say um, um, give yourself a lot of flexibility and a lot of room to make mistakes and to struggle and that sort of thing. I, I think the, the more advanced musicians that I know, they, they go into two paths. One is the hard work and I'm, I'm just going to keep my nose to the grindstone. And the other one is the I have a whole lot of attitude, right? And of the two, I like spending my time with the ones that are still working hard, uh, trying to, to bring, continue to bring wonder and joy into music. And the ones who are like, yeah, I know everything. I, I'm really, I'm all that. Uh, those guys, you know, we let them, we let them hang out with each other. <laughs> uh, and so we want to continue to always have a sense of wonder and a sense of struggle and a sense of trying to get it right. And um, so... Um, when you get to a piece like this, Scarborough Fair, that's a hard piece of music, um, you you should be struggling on it. And I would hope that you would say, you know what, it's a hard piece of music, I'm struggling on it, but I know what I'm supposed to do. It's just going to take me a little time to sit down and study it. Um, Linda asks, do you know of any exercises, exercise gadgets to strengthen your left hand? Let me, um, I, I think it's an important question. When you are talking about, hey, I got to get this hand stronger um, right now, um, I'm needing to do this bar chord. Let's say it's this bar chord. Um, how do I get this hand stronger? Well, those gadgets, they make some that are like have claw things and, and you know, have rubber bands that give you resistance and all that. I am 100% against all of that stuff um, because I think that it potentially could injure you. And I know from experience that the way to strengthen your overall body is to play with great posture in the correct ways if you keep and give yourself time to develop the muscles that need to be here so the muscle that really needs to be here is this one right here there's three of them actually um, but that's the muscle that's going to have to be developed in order for your it sounds to be good and I don't want you to be you know attaching some sort of crazy gadget on your hand to get that stronger faster I want you to play music and if you will play music a half an hour to two hours every single day that's gonna this is magically gonna get strengthened um, the other way I know to do that is go rock climbing but you can fall off rock climbing and, and crack your head open so I don't recommend that but um, but uh, getting stronger hands is definitely a goal I just don't really like those gadgets that are out there that I see advertised I think you can spend a lot of money on that stuff. And I've spent some money on, on that sort of stuff over the years. And so far, I can tell you, the only gadget, the only gadget that I still use is this thing here that sits on the side of this guitar. That way I don't have to put my foot up on a foot pedal. This is the only gadget I've ever found that I actually like. Um, and that just helps me hold the guitar better. <laughs> um, but all the other gadgets are just, I, I, it seems to me, um, somebody comes up with the solution of how to play this instrument or that instrument, and I don't, I don't recommend them, guys. And um, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need one of the gadget makers to come and show me why, why those things are a good idea. But I haven't. Of all of the things I bought, they all end up in the trash can. <laughs> so there's that. Um, Valerie Sin, uh, good to be here on a great and cloudy day up in Chicago. Glad you made it in, Valerie. Lynn says. I don't feel bad if you come back here several times or if the advanced class you can only keep up with the chords or notes or yeah yeah I mean honestly <laughs> I come back to Frere Jaca every six weeks for 10 years now and um, I learn something from it every time maybe different things than I learned the first time but there's always an, there's always something else uh, to be gained from coming back to the easy stuff and there's also something to be gained from pushing yourself to go you know flounder around a little bit in the tough class so yeah heck yeah great great men great point lynn uh and then valerie says my hand therapist had me work with a play-doh therapy putty a fun way to string yeah right that's maybe a good idea yeah so uh, that's uh, that there you go now there's a therapist physical therapist saying hey here's 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 some things you could do get some play-doh you know squeeze it do that my piano teacher used to have me carry around a tennis ball it was mostly to get my hand in the right shape but, but you know of course you're busy squeezing it and she actually made me carry around a softball <laughs> which is 
was even bigger. You know, like Argh. right. Uh, but that was to teach me to get my hands to to be in a circle shape um, for piano, and that actually has turned out to be a helpful thing on this as well. Uh, but I do know there is this the, a little contraption out there you put on your hands and it's got rubber band type things and it gives you resistance there. I think I just I don't I don't I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't like it. Okay, let's talk Scarborough Fair today, guys. Um, one, uh, this is a hard piece. This is clearly level two, and um, so there's a lot of stuff on here that may or may not go well for you. We want to play it well, and, but let's talk about everything on here. First of all, G minor is your main chord. Uh, baritone players, this will be a D minor. Okay. Next chord is an F chord, and that's going to be a C chord on baritone. Okay. And then a little further down, measure th five, you've got that B flat. Here's where we talk about strengthening your hand, right? This is in the beginning going to sound like and that sh you've got to let that be okay. And then uh, as you get your 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 muscle built right here, um, that's that chord will come in. Um, I will point out, uh, my guitar teacher says, hey man, you don't even need to use your thumb. Okay, but in order to do that, I'm cranking down pretty hard on this, right? So it's an exercise that's fascinating. Try playing without your thumb at all <laughs> and see how, whether you can do it. All right? But I'm basically squishing the whole ukulele down in order to do that. Um, but that tells you one thing is that you probably overemphasize the importance of even this muscle. Um, it's really about effectively um, holding your ukulele correctly um, and, um, and letting, letting your body do its own thing. And also remember guys, um, I teach this exact, exact same program. Uh, everything's exactly the same on guitar. And guitar is much, much harder to do your bar chords and to get clean tones and all that because you got tw you got two more strings and, and often they're metal strings, right? So it's a lot harder to hold that stuff down. Um, and so I'm um, not saying that, you, that ukulele is easy, but it's definitely easier than some of the other instruments um, in terms of the, these more advanced chordings. It's also why I get to teach you guys advanced chording because we can do it, you can do it. And if you'll be comfortable with that sound for a while, it comes in one day and you just have to be patient and wait for that um i love the idea of play-doh by the way um other chords in this song measure seven uh, we got a c chord and baritone player that's of course your g chord and then i think there's one more chord is there nope that's it okay um those of you who are old enough to remember Simon and Garfunkel, you're going to channel them a little bit on this. Make sure you don't over-channel them. Let's play what's on the paper. Um, and let's give the chords a try. One, two, three. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Two, three, one. Parsley, sage, rosemary. Two. Remember me to one who lives there. Three, four. She once was a true love of mine. Two, three, one, two, three. We'll go back to the top. I want you to grab your, your arpeggio hand, thumb index middle and we're going to do six plucks per measure thumb index middle thumb index middle thumb index middle thumb index middle thumb index thumb index are you going to scar burrow fair three one two three parsley say Let's go back to the beat, and I made it too hard. Let's do three beats. One, two, three. One, two, three. From the top. Two, three. Thumb, index, no. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme.
see where I messed up. I got to measure 13. I'm on a 3 4 all the way along. 3 4, 3 4, 1 2, 3, 1 2, 3. And then I get to 4 4. I'm like, oh gosh. There. I should have just come back with my index finger for beat 4 and then grab the G minor and go on there. Those guys who are fine with singing, this business of arpeggio picking is going to make you sound amazing all of the time, every song, right? And so the more, the sooner you get where you're comfy with it, um, the sooner you can um, um, play better than the uh, any other ukulele player. You know, if I did this in a nine pattern, one two three, one two three, one two three, one two three, are you going to scar? See, it starts to sound kind of fancy. Um, you can also do an arpeggio pattern backwards. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And then I'm doing it like you know from the Better Bar Worksheet, middle index thumb. So we're just trying to be thoughtful about what are we going to do with our right hand because the chords in them, of themselves are more advanced chords than we usually do uh, in foundations class and so that alone may be enough right if, we're, if we just do a simple strum are you going to Scarborough Fair parsley sage rosemary and thyme right so so um Start with that, and even go straight to your simple pluck, right? Your your four finger pluck. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Two, three. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Two, three, one, two, three. Together, just just do your, your four finger pluck. That's actually helpful. I'm gonna do terrible B flats, and we're gonna find out if it made a difference. Okay, I'll make I'll make ter crummy B flats, just like you might be making. <laughs> One, two, three. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Two, three. Parsley, sage, rosemary. of times I, I need to remind players who are fighting their bar chords that in Hawaii when you oftentimes they'll use um, ukulele as a percussion instrument when you go to the luau um, they usually have all sorts of uh, uh, kind of unique instruments there um, but ukulele is almost always there and um, what they're the Hawaiian sound actually comes from the steel guitar, but the ukulele creates this thing like everybody's like, oh, isn't that sweet? I like to do that. And they're often using it as a percussion instrument because look how cool that is. I mean, that's a pretty cool sound uh, to use as a drum as well. And if I were just to use this as a drum, make no chords. Are you going to scar for fair? If I could sing... Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Remember me. Right? So you don't have to make chords. <laughs> if you're a decent singer, you just play the rhythm uh, and then have your voice come out over the top. Obviously, as a ukulele player, you want to get where you can get all the chords in good. Those are your 
four chords, okay? Um, all right, now, let's tackle the melody. You already know, I sang it enough times where you got a general sense of how it goes. Let's give it a try. From the top, one, two, three. Three, three, five, 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 oh, one, oh, three, two, three, rest. Five, eight, ten, eight, five, seven, three, five, two, three, one, two, ten, 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 eight, five, five, three, one, oh, one, three, four, three, five, three. Top one, two, three. So it's a 10. <laughs> um, the question you come up to as you are approaching the end of foundations is, did you know how to do that? Did you know basically, you did, it doesn't matter if you got it right, but you knew what you were supposed to do. You know your, where your threes are, you know which string is which. After class, when you're not under the pressure of playing along with me, can you sit down and knock that melody out? If you can, you're, 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 you're in golden shape. That means that you now know how to retablature well, and that means that you can go play banjo, mandolin, guitar, uh, any of those instruments with frets on it, um, and, and you'll be fine. Okay, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Make sure you know that that's okay. <laughs> chords, chords are always going to be a problem. There's always another chord you don't know, and you have to look it up. And you're like, oh, I hate that chord. Um, that those that will never change, even to this day. I, I mean, I know every chord on this <laughs> instrument, and still, often there's like, ah, oh, shoot, A minor six. Which one? Which one is that? I gotta go look it up. And I'm like, oh, it's this one. You know. So so. Uh, uh, when you get to the end of the jazz chords, it's impossible to remember everything, and so you uh, you you get where you're, you're you know you know the big ones, the main ones, um, and then every song has one or two chords that you're like, oh boy, I got to go look that up, um, or I got to spend some time studying it and getting where I'm comfortable with it. Let's talk about um, playing the tough you now. Okay, this is obviously where I like to get you. You should also know that. Um, uh, Daisy Bell earlier this week is really the end of lesson of the foundation class. Um, the last three lessons have all been challenging for you to, to give you a sense of where you're headed. Um, you start with your G minor, right? That's your first chord. Zero, two, three. We normally feel like that's a G chord, but in this case, it's a G minor. Zero, two, and three. Strum that. Hit the three. You're already holding it down. Take your pinky up to the five and strum that. The five again. Go grab the um, F shape here, and then one O. Put your G minor back on. Two, three. Now notice on the tough uke, you have a chord here, whereas in the melody there's a rest. Guess what? That means it's your job to fill in that space as the the chord player. Right? You grab that B flat, and then you immediately got to rush up and get the melody note. Five, pinky on eight. And then you got zero, ten, ten, ten. I think your sheet music just says ten, ten, ten. Um, but you can hit this top one, it's fine. Okay, put a, a little mini bar on ten. One, two, three. Okay, isn't that fun? Okay, all this is, remember on uh, Home on the Range, we had it here. Okay, now we just have it up on ten. Okay, there's your um, Barsley Sage. Let's go grab an eight rose. And then you gotta go with zero, zero, five. Mary. And, okay, and then you 
that you go back to your G minor, pinky on five. Two, three, two. That five is being tied over, so you can ignore that once you hit the five. You're just letting that ring while you play these other notes. Now we're gonna go back to the 10, put, it, put that little mini bar on 10, play the high 10, and then a strum. High 10 again. Here's the, here's the part that's ad advanced. This is a different shape on a B flat, okay? You're gonna put, uh, in the singing part up there, it said, just shows a regular B flat, which is what will happen in all of the sheet music. I always put the easier version of the chord up above so that if you're singing it, you don't need to get into this fancy stuff. But as an instrumentalist, when you're dealing with tough you, you gotta sit down and say, all right, there's a mess of stuff here, what do I do? Lowest note is a five in that, so I'm gonna put a bar on five. Next I see a six, right there, I'm gonna put my middle finger there. Next I see a seven, I'm gonna put my ring finger up there. Look what you got, your F shape, bar, baritone players, that'll be a C shape, okay? In front of your bar on five. And then unfortunately with this song, the melody note's an eight, so I gotta use my pinky. So that's really hard to do. Bar on five, F shape, pinky on eight, okay? Now, let's hear it. Isn't that pretty? Okay. The question is, Jerry, when I get into the next level, how often are we gonna do this? We're gonna do this all the time. Right? How's he, how are you gonna get better at it? Doing it all the time. <laughs> Comes up surprising a lot, this shape. Sometimes this shape is here and sometimes it's shaped down here. Okay, but in this case, we're on five. F shape in front, turns it magically into a B flat chord. Melody notes on eight. Okay, there you go. Next note's a five, just lift up your pinky. And then you got a whole, another chord, five, six, five, seven, bar on five, six and seven. Then three, one, F chord. Let that one ring for three full beats, and then go back to major 14, G minor, pinky on five, F chord with your pinky on three. Hit the one, F chord, three, G chord, G minor chord, thumb, the full strum, three, two, and then we would repeat the end, the second ending measured 19 to 21 is basically the same, a little bit of a different arpeggio shape. And then measure 22, there's that little bar on 10 again. Okay, let's play it. Baritone players. Um, you are you have a mess of stuff on here, right? If you want to strum along with the chords, uh, G minor is here. F chord is um, the B flat on here. Looks like your F chord. Okay, uh, your C chord is obviously right here, and missing one, right? Is that what am I missing? G minor, B oh B flat. That's your index finger here, and these two guys are up here. That's your B flat. Okay, your B flat is actually easier than a ukulele B flat, uh, but your F's way harder than, <laughs> than that. Let's give it a try. Um, and again, when we get ready to play ensemble, when you're playing along with me, you gotta know that's the hardest way to play, and it's the, also gonna be the thing that makes you the best, the fastest. Sitting in your house with a ukulele play with a ukulele piece of music in front of you will make you a pretty good player practicing right but what's going to make you a good player a great player is playing with other people and that's why we have to show up that's why you have to play with me because my rhythm is not perfect um if i stuck a, if I, everything i played was with a metronome i'd get pretty good at playing with the metronome uh but that's not how music works music is negotiated and so the the drummer is there on purpose to uh, to sometimes speed up sometimes slow down to let the music and the emotional feeling of whatever the song is doing uh, happen in a human way and that's why we don't just always play to a metronome you will get better playing with a metronome but i don't recommend it and takes the fun out of music um playing with other people adds in tons of fun makes it a little more difficult um and so don't just sit in your house and try to play and try to get better people tell me that all the time i'm gonna go home and practice and i'll call you in six months and i never hear from them ever again because they're not going home and practicing right they're just being like Ugh, 
I, I'm going to pick up knitting. Um, so that's why we play with each other, and that's and that's why when you're playing along, and I'm on tough you, and you're like, I have no hope of getting through measure eleven effectively. Uh, jump up, play the melody notes, and then when you get to measure thirteen, drop down, put your F chord on, and you're fine. Okay, so play the parts you can from the top, nice and slow, two times through. One, two, three. I'm just realizing I got about three fourths of the way through that and I'm like, wait a minute, this is Scottish music. And I look at it and I'm like, yeah, it is Scottish music. Oh, wait, Jana, Janice is here. <laughs> we need to ask her permission to play this. <laughs> We're not trying to culturally uh, appropriate you, Janice. Um, all right, so that's the ukulele version. Let's go grab the baritone version. We're running, running a little tight on time. Um, and then we will um, we'll, we'll wrap up with a brief discussion about tomorrow, making sure that everybody's feeling comfortable with what's about to happen tomorrow. And then, um, and then tomorrow we will talk a little bit more about just decision making about the best ways forward. Um, because I know all of you guys are thinking about it, like, like, mm. and, it and it really comes down to um, how tolerant you are <laughs> playing this that music a second time. Oops, that's Silent Night. That's going to sound funny if you try to play Scarborough Fair and I play Silent Night. Here we go. Ukulele players, your D minor is right here. It's your F chord with your ring finger, remember? Okay, there's your D minor. C chord, oh, thank goodness, you'll be fine with that one. C chord, okay. F chord, very lovely, right there, okay. And then your G chord, remember from day four or something, where I showed you G chord and you're like, I don't like G chord. G chord's fine now, okay. That's progress, okay. So ukulele players, you actually have fairly uh, normal chords here, baritone players. We're going to play exactly what we just played on ukulele. Uh, we'll take uh, two times. Let's do it. Th let's do it three times. Let no, let's do it. F how much time we got? Let's do it four times through. Okay. First time I'm going to play the chords. You're going to play the melody. Second time through, I'm going to play the melody. You're going to play the chords. Third time through, I'm going to play tough uke. And then the fourth time through, I'm going to play tough uke as well. 
Janet says, I know the song, but it's actually English. <laughs> Scarborough, oh, Scarborough Fair, the place is in England. Yeah, well, I, I usually do a tiny bit of Wikipedia research prior to putting on where it's from. So I think Wikipedia thinks this is Scottish. <laughs> um, I don't know, Janice. I don't know. Um, <laughs> all right. First time through, you're on melody. One two unless you're on ukulele if you have a ukulele in your hand you know you're on chords all four times baritones on melody one two three 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 five 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 oh one oh three two three rest five eight ten Eight, five, seven, three, five, two, three, one, two, ten, 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 eight, five, five, three, one, oh, one, two, three, three, five, three. Tone players skip to switch to melody or switch to chords. Now I'm going to play the melody. You guys are going to back me up from the top. One, two, three. To the top, I'm going to switch to tough uke. Baritone players, you're on tough uke. Chord uh, ukulele players, sticking with your chords. Fourth time, third time through, we'll do this two times on tough axe just so we have a chance. I'm going to do my thumb the first time and then I'm going to pluck the second time. One, two, three. <laughs> to your last chord for a minute okay and there we have it 
Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. You will be working tonight to make sure that you have your make to double check you got your make a better bar worksheet together. Uh, then we're gonna play Daisy Bell, which is really the end of intra class. <laughs> uh, arpeggiator key and F. That's a pretty tough piece of music. Aloha Oi, pretty tough piece of music. Scarborough Fair, pretty tough piece of music. And then we will then we'll give you just some thoughts to think about as to, as to the final decision making in terms of what you're gonna do. And again, you don't have to do one or the other. You can do both, right? But usually you only have time for it to stand for 45 minutes of um, online time. And so then you will you will pick what's gonna make the most sense for you um, and uh, um, at this point in my life I probably can't add in really much in the way of private lessons because I just don't have enough time as it is um, but we will definitely find a place and a way for you to move forward where it makes sense and so um, there we go. Let's see. Janice said, uh, I know, uh, let's see, maybe someone traveling from Scotland. <laughs> well, probably what happened was, um, it was a Scottish song and then the Scots went down and said, um, uh, or actually probably worked the other way, right? The British went up and said, Hey, we're taking that song and, you, and we're taking the name of that and, and we're going to make our own, uh, square out of that and you can do whatever you want, but that's what we're doing. And the Scots are like, well, we're going to have to murder all of you guys. And they're like, yeah, just go ahead and try. <laughs> and it was a big kerfuffle. And uh, then uh, uh, there, there's that. There's that. You know, you, you Scots and the English, they don't, they don't necessarily see eye to eye. When the, I think I've told you guys this story. When we went up to Scotland, um, I actually have been there twice. I forgot we went the previous time. The first time we went up there, rode the train up from London. Um, we got into Edinburgh, got in the taxi. And he says, oh, we're going to need to go to this hotel. And he says, well, where are you coming from? And we said, from London. And then immediately, he's just like, oh, you're hanging out with those people, are you? <laughs> like, just right off, the, right off the bat, just automatically cracking on the English right off the bat. <laughs> off the bat. I loved it. Let's see. Lynn says, it sounds spectacular on the baritone. It sounds cool, right? So, again, um, you know, get where you can really play ukulele and then toss in a baritone first for fun for once in a while. Nancy, I'll see you next hour for some Italian. Yeah, we have Italian music next hour. And no lyrics, just just picking out songs. Um, all right, Lynn said, Lynn, Mary's struggling with her baritone. Um, we, if you're not struggling, you're not doing it right, guys. Okay, if you're not struggling, you're not doing it right. <laughs> all right, thanks, Mary. Vic, good, good to see you. Um, all you got, all y'all have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow for concert.